So I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with Thrive and my experience with emetophobia and, you know, just getting over emetophobia, too. Um, so before I you know, even heard about Thrive, you know, I was, I just, since I could remember, you know, <laughs> the worry of getting sick was kind of always in the back of my mind. It was never that prevalent, um, but it was for sure, you know, a thought. You know, I never, I never really got sick. I only got sick once when I was, you know, a very young child and I was five years old. So, you know, I don't even remember the situation, but I just have always just worried about getting sick and people getting sick, and I just kind of was just kind of disgusted with it. Obviously, it's not a pretty thing. Um, but, you know, I was still able to live my life the way I wanted to. You know, it was still in the back of my mind a little bit, but it was so far back there that it really never crossed my mind that often, unless, I, you know, I saw something I didn't want to see um, or heard something I didn't want to hear. Um, but, you know, through through college, for the first three uh, three years, I was, you know, living life the way I wanted to. I was, you know, going out with friends. I was drinking. I was eating what I wanted, when I wanted. And, you know, that definitely took a toll on my health as it is. But, um, you know, come senior year of college, which was only, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago um, that I started senior year. So now I officially graduated. Yay. Um, but starting – senior year, I was doing Weight Watchers, and I was kicking ass doing Weight Watchers. I was so happy. I was losing the weight I always wanted to lose, but never had, you know, the the courage or the drive to, you know, diet and lose that weight, but, you know, with dieting comes with, you know, eating healthy and cutting out things that aren't really so good for you, so I really cut out, you know, I cut out the coffee, I cut out the alcohol, I cut out the fried food and the desserts. And I lost, you know, about, I wanted to lose about, you know, 25 pounds. But I ended up losing about 45, which was, you know, besides the point. But, you know, finally I was happy, you know, with my weight and how people saw me, you know, how I saw myself. Um, but, you know, that was the start of senior year. And I don't know if it was the stresses of senior year or if it was the stress of defining a job for when I graduated, but I was just so anxious, just always so anxious. And, you know, how my anxiety manifested was in a way that um, I always thought that I was going to get sick, always. You know, I would think about, you know, what if I ate and then got into a car, am I going to get car sick? Or what if I flew on an airplane, like, am I going to get you know, sick on the plane, or if I eat something that I have, you know, haven't eaten for a while since I cut out so much, you know, am I going to get sick from that? Like, I don't, is it not going to agree with me anymore? Well, it really got to the point where I was just, just a mess, you know, just an absolute disaster, and I was, you know, stressing out about everything, and there was a point, actually, in the mid-November, so about about a year ago, where my friend came to me, and, you know, she wasn't feeling good, she was sick, and, you know, I knew it from other things, but she was convinced that she was sick from, you know, from a stomach, a stomach bug, and, you know, that just, that just kicked it off, I mean, I was so anxious from that point on, and I was just not, I wasn't eating, so I was so worried that I was going to get sick, just so worried that anything I put in my system, I would get, I would, I would get sick, and I don't know what getting sick feels like, so, you know, someone who gets sick often, like, it's not a big deal, but for me, I had no idea, you know, I, last time I got sick was when I was five, so I, I, what, I don't know, I don't know what it feels like, but I was so nervous and so anxious to eat that I didn't eat for about a week. You know, I could count the things on one hand that I ate in a week. You know, it's nothing. And that that's not healthy as well. I mean, you know, I looking back, I mean, you can get you can get sicker from that. But anyway, I was so anxious to the point where I knew I needed help. I knew I needed something to help me. And my dad actually found Thrive online and there was a seminar in New York City later that week, so I left school a few days early for Thanksgiving and went to New York City and I really think that what they were saying, what Rob Kelly was saying in that seminar was very true. And emetophobia is a very complex, you know, phobia. You know, it's built on so many 
different thinking styles, negative thinking styles, and so many different aspects of the way you, you know, view life. Um, but, at, you know, after the seminar, you know, my dad and Rob Kelly asked me if I wanted to try it out and, you know, what harm could it do? You know, why wouldn't I give it a try? You know, anything at this point could help me. I was really desperate for something. Um, but, yeah, I started with um, the book and, you know, with finals and everything. I didn't really get around to doing it. But come January, February, I worked with Jane. And um, I started working with him, and I really instantly felt a difference. I felt better. You know, I felt like, you know, my world kind of just opened up to me. And it wasn't, Thrive was not just about curing emetophobia. I mean, it is, that's probably the hardest part for people who suffer with that phobia. Um, but it's just all about gaining freedom in your life. Um, it's just about getting to the point where you're confident and you're able to, you know, hold your head up high and feel as though you can look at yourself in the mirror and be proud of yourself, even if you didn't accomplish anything. Just feel proud of yourself. And I definitely felt that way after doing a few weeks of Thrive. I felt, you know, that if someone asked me, if I were to do, you know, this testimonial, you know, would I say I was cured of emetophobia? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I'd react in the situation, but I know I could manage. But I also know that I am a much happier person. I have a different view on life. And it's, you know, the way I react to things are not are not because of how other people behave, but it's because how I choose to react to a situation. And I'm just in control of my life, and I can't control the things around me. Um, but I was a lot happier, and I was, you know, feeling like I was thriving. Um, but unfortunately, you know, for someone who does suffer with emetophobia or has suffered from it, <coughs> excuse me, or who's not in the process of, fully in the process of getting over it, you know, is you know, just almost there, 90% of the way there. You know, it still has, you know, some some issues could, could arise. And my breaking point or my road bump, sorry, a large one, be it, um, was my campus, my school, had a neurovirus outbreak where for days and weeks, and I think it went even up to over a month, just days of people, I was getting reports daily of how many people were coming down with cases. 20, 40, 60, and then like 100, 150 people were getting like getting this norovirus. And of course, one of my roommates is within the first 10 people to get it. So, you know, I'm early, right off the bat, exposed to this, you know, terrible disease, terrible illness, which, you know, obviously is very quick and, you know, you go through it and you survive and you're fine. But, for me, I, you know, not being 100% there yet was so, so distraught, so completely distraught. I was, you know, life was done for, for me. You know, I was so, I was so scared. Um, you know, it, you know, people would ask me, like, what would happen if you got, if you got sick? Like, what would happen? And of course I know rationally, I would survive. I would be fine. Life would go on. It's gross. Yes but I'll be okay. But in an anxious state, you know, you can't talk, you can't talk, you know, reasoning to me. I was not, I was not having it. Um, but that went on for a while, and I managed the best I could. You know, I didn't want to, didn't feel comfortable eating dishes, you know, in the sink or eating with silverware that she was prior ate and maybe didn't wash very well. You know, neurovirus lasts on services for a very long time, so I was trying to take precaution as well as just, try and keep myself sane, but that went on for a really long time, and I felt, you know, down the dumps is probably an understatement, you know, I felt really upset, I felt really, you know, discouraged, and I felt just, just over it, I was just over it, you know, like, I, people were judging me that I wasn't going out to hang out with people who have neurovirus, like, why would I go hang out with people who are sick, but I was just, you know, social anxiety went up, self-esteem sort of went back down, and I felt like I was back to square one. And that's nothing, that's not what you want to hear when you're going through the program. You know, you want to hear that, you know, all sparkles and rainbows, you know, life is great once you do the program. You know, it takes work. It takes a lot of work to maintain, you know, a healthy lifestyle, a healthy, healthy thinking style. But I let that go, and I let that slide. 
and that was my biggest mistake. Um, but, you know, I graduated. I never, I'd never got a neurovirus, so I should be hearing an applause right now. <laughs> But never got sick, and I was I was fine. And I I got over it. But now I'm now I'm home, living out. Now I'm back, you know, in my hometown, living with my parents again, graduating from school, and my job is starting up. And you know, I feel like I'm back to square one. And I've gone through the textbook. I've gone through it all. I know what I know exactly what I'm doing wrong. I know that I'm not putting in the work, and that I let myself go essentially. Um, but I continue working with James here and there. And, you know, in time, I felt that, you know, I kind of got back to where I was. But unfortunately, you know, from a product of cutting so much food out of my life, I was still feeling sick. You know, I wasn't always anxious, but I was physically not feeling good quite often, which sparked some anxiety. Um, so, you know, if I'm talking to someone, they ask me how I'm doing, you know, it's less about my anxiety. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. But physically, I don't feel good, and that's almost, to me, just as bad. But, you know, I've found out I'm severely lactose intolerant, and apparently I have every possible stomach disease you can imagine. Not any horrible ones, thank God, but, you know, I have the acid reflux, and I have the you know, the IBS, and I have the, um, and I have the gastritis, you know, I have pretty much, pretty much everything, but yeah, going back to working with James, I mean, he's definitely tried to keep my morale up, and, you know, allows me to, you know, put on, you know, clear lenses, per se, when I'm talking to him, and just thinking about the world, and thinking back on my life, but, you know, I can sit here and say to you, you know, while I'm not feeling good physically, and while I'm trying to figure that out, that has nothing to do with my metaphobia. You know, while I'm trying to figure out, you know, my eating and my nutrition and what I can and can't eat, because obviously things do develop when you're older and when you cut food out of your diet, I can say that the Thrive Program has really helped me. You know, I, would, I don't know where I would have been if I never tried the Thrive Program. I don't know where I would have been. You know, I, I would maybe still have my my emetophobia so bad that I couldn't fly or I couldn't drive or I couldn't try food. I mean, it's it's still, it's a, it's a, it's a two, it, there's two issues. I mean, there's that and there's, for me, there's the, I don't know what I can eat because I don't know, I don't want to feel sick. And that's not my anxiety. Like, I physically don't want to feel sick because I actually don't know what I can and can't have right now. But yeah, but that 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 isn't a metaphobia. You know, metaphobia is about your thinking style. It's about how you choose to perceive situations in reference to your anxiety and your eating and how you just live life. And I think I'm choosing the right things. I think I'm choosing correctly for how I should be living and how I should be going about my daily routines. Like I don't think I have a profound you know, influence of emotophobia over my daily routines. You know, I'm able to go out with friends, and I'm able to eat what I want, you know, with like reason. Um, but I really do think that the Thrive Program has helped me. Um, and I wouldn't say I have emetophobia anymore. You know, I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm constantly anxious. There are times, you know, life life is hard sometimes. You know, life life is life is challenging. You know, you're dealing with different stresses, you're dealing with different challenges, and that's that's what life is. And there are times when you're gonna be more anxious than others, but that doesn't mean that you're not thriving. That doesn't mean that, you know, a metaphobia has got you down. You know, you don't you don't know what it's like to get sick, but you know you know that you'll be okay. You'll know that you'll be okay no matter what. And yeah, it's disgusting. Of course. Even people who don't have emetophobia agree with that. It's gross. But you get over it. You get through it and you, you work you work on it. And you know, you don't need to be able you don't need to get sick to know 
that you'll make it through. You need to have enough confidence in yourself that you can make it through. And I can say I have that. You know, I have, you know, been, you know, granted with the opportunity to teach myself that. You know, if I didn't have James, if I didn't have Rob, if I didn't have the Thrive Program, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And I can sit here and list for you all the reasons why I don't think I have emetophobia. I mean, I can say to you, you know, I can go out with people. I can enjoy a burger at a game and not have to, a basketball game and not have to worry about where it's, where and how it was cooked. I know I'm not going to get, you know, a food poisoning from a burger or, you know, salmonella from a cookie that, cookie dough that I'm eating. You know, I know that I can be in a car for a long amount of time and not get sick. I know I can fly to Europe or wherever and be perfectly fine. I know that when I do have my stomach aches when I'm not feeling good, for whatever reason that is, I know I'll make it through. And I know that food isn't going to be the problem that's going to get me sick. Very few things can get me sick. I've gone through it all, and I still haven't gotten sick, so why would I would? Why would I get sick now? Why? You know, I've gotten lightheaded. I've had the flu. I've had strep throat. I mean, some people get sick from strep throat. I've taken antibiotics. I've had food poisoning. And have I gotten sick? No. So if I can admit that to myself... And I can admit that to other people and be confident when I say that. I mean, I don't think I have emetophobia. I mean, I know I don't have emetophobia. Like I said before, you know, there are challenges in life. You know, there are times where you're going to be anxious. And puke is disgusting. But once you're confident enough to say that you're over emetophobia, you're over emetophobia. And once you're happy with your life and able to live it the way you want to, obviously within reasons, you know, for me, if I have some allergies, I can't eat certain things. But if you live your life the way you want to and you go out and you have fun and you're happy, that's thriving. That's, you know, enjoying life. That's what, you know, you know, getting through the program and winning means. It's meaning, it's, it means accepting that there are hard and good days. It's accepting the fact that you are now confident. You know, you can't have control over everything. But if I'm able to sit here and tell you that even though I struggled and even though I went through so much and I'm still I'm still learning. You know, it's gonna be a big learning process. I'm still learning, but if I can sit here and tell you all of this then you should know that you be able you should be able to do it too. And I'm here to help anyone. If they need to talk to anyone Talk to me. I'm here. I'm here to help. Thanks.